customer range. My name is uh, Jason Matloff. I'm the VP of marketing. Don't throw eggs, please. Don't throw eggs. <laughs> um, and I want to welcome you all to A10 Networks here in San Jose. Thank you for spending your morning with us. Uh, we have a lot of information we're going to share with you. So um, I am going to uh, provide a brief introduction uh, and an overview of the agenda for the day. And then I'm going to hand it off to my much more capable colleagues over here. We have Raj Kumar Jalan, our CTO. And then we have Mike Thompson and Rich Groves, who are principal architects in the office of the CTO. They're going to do the majority of the discussion today, and I'll, uh, I'll get out of the way as quickly as possible. Um, at a very high level, I know that I talked to some of you in the hallway out before we started. Um, for those of you who don't know a A10 or the application networking space, let me just briefly position our, uh, you know, who we are. Uh, we are a leading uh, and fast-growing player in the application networking space with a variety of solutions that help our customers increase the performance, the availability, and the security of their data center applications and networks. Um, so that's a very high level. We'll obviously go into that in much more depth. Let me start start by taking a poll of, of all the uh, audience here. Who here has had experience working with A10 products or have some familiarity with uh, A10 in general? Okay, we actually have a couple, three, four, um, but it's still the vast majority. So for us, the, the real high level objective of the day today is uh, to really uh, get the information out to you all about what our products, our solutions, and some of the new features that we've recently released are. Uh, A10 is a very fast growing company. We've grown around 35% uh, compound growth rate over the last four years. We just went public, which was great financial stability wise. We put $120 million on our balance sheet, which is great. But the reality is we still are a very small company. So I um, really appreciate you all coming here today. Um, and the whole point is to get as much information transferred to you as today as possible. And when you have those technical questions, hold them because this is your real technical audience here. Um, so let me just briefly set the stage here. So what you have in front of you, and this is an eye chart, I apologize, but the good news is it's in front of you. We've created what we're calling a placemat, which is <clears throat> in front of you on all your, your tabletops in front of you. Um, it's an, a, a bunch of information about the agenda for the day, factoids about A10, an overview of our products. Let me just briefly lay it out because there's a lot of good information there. The left side has the agenda for the day so you can reference it. At the bottom is the network topology, the, uh, the network diagram for the topology that we're using today. We're going to attempt to do a live demo, which is obviously the stupidest thing for a vendor to do on live broadcast. <laughs> and yet uh, you all do it. <laughs> and yet we all do it. We keep coming back for more. Um, so that's the left side. The center panel, the center column, is an overview of all of our A10 products and solutions offering. And then the right side is a bunch of factoids that I won't go over because I know you don't want to hear it, but you can peruse it at your own uh, leisure. Information about A10, our growth rate, our customers, um, etc. So from an agenda perspective, uh, I'm going to briefly get off stage in just a moment, and we're going to hand it off to Raj. Raj is going to go into a deep dive on our advanced core operating system uh, that we, we call ACOS, our ACOS platform. And it's the really, the, the really rich, high-performance, software-based architecture or operating system that we build all of our products on uh, here at A10. Then we're going to go into demos led by Mike Thompson and Rich Groves, who are principal architects, as I mentioned. And uh, it's going to follow a kind of a progression uh, that uh, we have laid out here in the agenda. And the progression is kind of a, a, a typical data center progression for a data center operator uh, that would that you, you're facing a number of challenges with needing a, a variety of solutions that, that we offer. So starting off with a, in a traditional uh, legacy, let's call it traditional data center, going over a variety of baseline application ser services and security services that uh, uh, data center operators need to secure and increase the performance and availability of their data center infrastructure. Then we're going to go into uh, next generation data center designs, uh, more um, uh, cloud oriented, XAAS infrastructure as a service designs any of the orchestration and automation features that are required in these next generation data centers. Then we're going to hand it off to Rich Groves, who's going to go into the next thing at the perimeter of the network, the increasing prevalence of large scale denial of service attacks, uh, and discussing how uh, using our new Thunder threat protection system or Thunder TPS product, we can mitigate at extremely high performance and capacity these uh, growing prevalence of, of DDoS attacks. So. Just two more quick slides, and then I'll hand it off to the smart guys. Um, this is an overview, for those of you who don't know us, of our product offering. 
So you see uh, three product lines. In the center is our meat and potatoes uh, Thunder ADC product line, our application delivery controller that provides that performance optimization, high availability, and security functionality to protect and uh, really increase the performance availability of data center application infrastructure. Um, it's where we started, um, and then we've extended into two other product lines. A few years ago on the left, you see here, we, we introduced our Thunder CGM product line, which is really an extension of uh, our core NATing functions that are in the ADC um, that are, provide a, a very, very high performance, dedicated appliance for IP transitions uh, for customers, primarily in the service provider space, that are trying to extend their IPv4 address space and IPv4 infrastructure with RFC compliant carrier grade NAT functions, as well as in the same device, a variety, uh, more than a half dozen IPv6 migration capabilities. I see an IPv6 uh, uh, logo over here, or, or um, uh, uh, I guess it's a, bump, a bumper sticker on your computer. So IPv6 migration capabilities for those service providers that are deploying IPv6 networks and need to tunnel through or to legacy IPv4 networks. And then on the right side, we have our Thunder TPS product line, which stands for Threat Protection System, that extends the functionality, the DDoS service capabilities that we have in our ADC with a dedicated high-performance DDoS appliance that's meant to be deployed either at enterprise network perimeter or in service provider cores to either provide uh, uh, protection for service provider infrastructure or to provide subscribers DDoS mitigation services as a service uh, in the service provider environment. All of these, as you can see here, are built upon a common platform. That is our advanced core operating system, this very rich, high-performance, software-based operating system at the middle that we call the ACOS platform, and Raj is going to go into in great depth. Last slide, since most of you who don't know A10 and maybe don't have a lot of experience with application networking, let me just briefly provide you a summary of all the variety of use cases that customers uh, use our various products uh, for different solutions to address, address different challenges. So what you see here on the left, and hopefully I'm not standing in anybody's way, the left side is our mainstream use case of the Thunder ADC in a traditional data center. In that scenario, we operate as a reverse proxy, front-ending all those critical application infrastructure assets in the data center, providing the optimization, availability, and security functions. We couldn't list them all here. There is a huge array of functionality there. Mike's going to try to do justice to it. It is a tremendous amount of features, uh, optimization features, uh, server load balancing and GSLB, of course, but security features like web app firewall, DNS firewall, um, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, optimization features like SSL offload, TCP uh, optimization, RAM caching, a variety of features to uh, increase the performance and security of your application infrastructure. Moving over to the right side, we can take that exact same product into a forward proxy mode in, in what we call our DMZ security optimization use case. And in that mode, in the forward proxy, what we're doing is proxying traffic from the internal users to the external internet. And in that, in that scenario, what we're doing is optimizing the performance and the uh, cost effectiveness of those very expensive security appliances in the DMZ. So we can do a variety of functions there. The first one is we can do SSL intercept to offload the very uh, high, um, the very taxing uh, CPU intensive functions of decryption from those very expensive security appliances in the DMZ. We can also obviously provide all the traffic and clear text so they can provide those value added security functions that they're, they're meant to do. And they're not meant to really, they're not really optimized for high performance decryption. So that's the first thing. We can also do a variety of things like load balancing across those devices to scale out, traffic steering so that on a policy basis you can peel off flows uh, for compliance reasons or security reasons and take certain flows and, and direct them towards certain devices, whether it's a DLP device or forensics or otherwise, we can selectively do that because we're application aware and have full layer seven context. Moving around the horn, we have our A-Cloud services offering for evolving infrastructure as a service data centers. So we can take all these services I talked about here and make them obviously virtualized, but more importantly, we have all the capabilities for integration into infrastructure as a service design. So orchestration integration, automation capabilities, integration with third parties that we'll talk about like Cisco, VMware, OpenStack, et cetera. Um, but importantly also, pay-as-you-go licensing. So uh, in infrastructure as a service, there's obviously a need to be able to spin up and down 
uh, services on demand for either private or public subscribers so they can get these services on a consumption basis rather than a dedicated basis. Top middle, we have a CGN appliance, as I mentioned, that's primarily used for service provider core and access networks for IP uh, transitions, IPv4 extension, IPv6 migration. And ending on the top left, we have our, our DDoS mitigation solution. Uh, in this case, it's being illustrated at the enterprise perimeter sitting at the network edge, doing extremely high performance in a single RU appliance. We can scale up to 150 gigs of, for example, SIN flood attacks and other types of attacks, um, as well as application attacks. Rich is going to go over this in great detail, um, providing a dedicated DDoS detection and mitigation solution. 